Hello and good morning to everyone who's joining me at UCCF. It's so good to spend some time with you. My name is Kate Middleton. I'm a psychologist and I'm a church leader and I'm also one of the directors of the Mind and Soul Foundation. We're a national organisation passionate about mental and emotional well-being. And, and I want to take this moment with you just to talk about some of the challenges of this crazy season that we're in and, and to think about some practical steps that we can take to hold the tension of this moment and to sustain ourselves and those we are supporting, those we love those we care for through this moment because it's actually more than a moment isn't it we headed into lockdown way back in March 2020 and and we went into it as though it were an acute crisis this short-term craziness that we would get through together but now we're finding ourselves some 10 11 months later still in the midst of pandemic and we're having to recognize this is a season and, and a season that we don't know when it will end. And that is tough. And, and part of the toughness comes from the demand that it places on us as human beings. You know, your mind uses rhythm and routine and predictability to keep your stress level low. And with that all gone, and because things keep on changing, that uncertainty and adaptation that's constant, relentless, everybody's baseline stress has actually risen. We're having to try to work out now not just how to get through a crazy crisis, but how to do some kind of ordinary life in circumstances which are extraordinary. It's like trying to get back to normal when things are still very far from normal. And, and that's a big challenge because normally if we hit a tough time, a lot of our effort goes into working out how to get out of that time, how to find solutions, how to move forwards. We're instinctively proactive as human beings and we like to resolve predicaments that we find ourselves in. But in this one, you know, it doesn't matter how clever you are. You cannot solve global pandemics. All you can do is watch it play out and that passivity has an impact on us and our loved ones. That awareness of our lack of control is really hard. And all of that means that one of the biggest problems we're facing right now is despair. That overwhelming, energy-sapping sense of futility and hopelessness. It's, it's an all-body experience despair. It's about emotions, feelings, thoughts and even physical sensations that just feel inescapable in those moments. It makes you want to hide away and isolate yourself. It makes planning or focusing on anything, motivating yourself to do things really hard. It is a real and growing risk in this moment. And, and particularly because we don't know when it will end. We're in limbo right now. And increasingly many people are also dealing with some difficult emotions. Trauma even that this season has brought, change and challenge and, and things that we need to think through. And we cannot do any of that until we get to the end of the season that's caused them. And that's really difficult. So really what we've got to do somehow in this moment is to find a way to sustain ourselves, to hold off despair, to manage our emotions, to lift our mood. And ultimately, we, we cannot row for sure because we can't control the wider context that we're in. So what this is about is learning to tread water as we wait for the tide to turn. And thinking about those little proactive, practical things that we can do and build into our days and our weeks and even months if this continues, that will enable us to keep afloat, to keep our heads above water and to support and sustain the other people who depend on us. And that requires a bit of deliberate thinking because it's slightly counter our instinct. We want to be able to have a bigger impact on things, but we can't. In this season, doing things that are just about sustaining and getting through the next day, those aren't futile. They are exactly what we need to be focusing on. Ultimately, what I'm talking about is the antidote to despair. It's hope. And, and there's another interesting aspect, another interesting impact of our building good things into our routine in this season. This is a line from uh, one of Paul's letters to the early church. It's Romans 5 verses 3 to 5. This is how the Passion Translation captures what he says. 
Even in times of trouble, we have a joyful confidence, knowing that our pressures will develop in us patient endurance. And patient endurance will refine our character and proven character leads us back to hope. And this hope is not a disappointing fantasy because we can now experience the endless love of God. And if you look at the ancient Greek that Paul wrote here, what he's literally talking about is moments just like now when we are forced to endure or remain under something. We're caught in a difficult situation. And what he's saying is that there's a potential in the midst of that pain and pressure. The, the most unexpected thing, that if we can build things into our routine and practice, it can change us, shape us, develop us in a way that grows our character and our capacity to hold hope for ourselves and for other people. So in this moment, the more you can harness the power of your mind to trigger good things that help you feel better, it will help now, but also it will release something powerful for the future. We know as psychologists that the more you can do that, harness the power of this network in your mind, which is sometimes called the hope circuit, this is something you can learn. It's like your default in stormy times is to believe that you're powerless. But as you learn through pushing yourself determinedly, sometimes defiantly, to do things that you know will help, even though you don't feel like it, your ability to use that system grows. You realise you can influence things even when the big stuff is out of your hands. So, so what Paul is saying here is a bit like saying it's character building when we hit tough times because it really is, it can shape and form who you are. So I want to just talk quickly about three things that as a psychologist I know do trigger that hope circuit. Three things that, that you can prioritise but you can also teach other people to prioritise that will help them get through this difficult moment but also maybe grow their capacity to hold hope and light and life and good things in whatever the next season brings. And the first is productivity. This is just our basic human need to feel like we're achieving something and going somewhere that we're basically effective. You know, this season of juggling so many things, sometimes it can feel like we've never failed at so much simultaneously in any one time before. And the monotony of lockdown and, and not being able to leave the house, your, ba your brain literally stops coding each day as a different experience. So you really do feel like you're going nowhere. On the rough days or the frustrating days or the overwhelmed days, think about something small you can do that will make you feel you've achieved something, especially if it also helps to restore order and it's something you can complete and feel a sense of accomplishment. It doesn't need to be massive. It could be just doing some chores, tidying something or cleaning something, sorting something out. It could be a craft, do a Lego model or a puzzle or um, some cross stitch or painting. But some days just taking a shower or a bath, completing something like that and doing it really properly instead of rushing through it and then zooming on to the next thing, that really can help. And remember that the little lift in mood from a productivity step may be enough to help you move on to something bigger. So productivity is a great place to start in the toughest moments. The second P is people. Connecting with people is so important. It is one of your basic human needs, but it is so tricky right now. So if we can find ways to do it, it will lift our mood, but it does take energy. So more P's, I'm afraid. Think about planning this. Who, when and how are you going to connect? And then prioritise it because you're going to need to save energy. It's no good planning a massive Zoom quiz for Friday night and then you get there and you spent the whole week on flipping Zoom and the last thing you can face is another hour or two on Zoom. You're just so exhausted you can't face it. So prioritise it. Save some energy. And, and thirdly, prepare. On the day, you might need to do something to be ready for that moment. Go out, get some headspace, get some quiet, drop your stress level down. Play some of those productivity tricks to lift your mood so that you can push yourself to reach out to someone. So think about how you do people. Number three is positive emotions. And, and let me just be clear, 
in lockdown there's lots of positivity around and sometimes that's a kind of forced positivity a defiant head down let's get on with it positivity and in a short-term crisis that's a really good strategy because we basically deal with it and process it later when it's all over but but just being positive and not admitting the existence of negative emotions is like trying to keep a beach ball under the water. It's hard work. And the longer you try to do it, the more the chance that those negative emotions will start to pop up somewhere you least expect it. So it might feel counterintuitive, but sometimes in order to feel more positive emotion, the first thing we need to do is try and think about how do we express and process and accept the presence of some of the more difficult emotions of this moment. Otherwise you end up having to switch off your entire emotional self and, and then you can't feel anything positive either. You know, positive emotions are not just some kind of selfish, hedonistic indulgence. It's like Nehemiah 8.10 says, the joy of the Lord is your strength. And that Hebrew word strength, it literally means it's your fortress, it's your tower, it's your place of protection. It's where you can retreat to in the stormy times or the battle times. Positive emotions and the ability to pursue good stuff is one of the most important skills of resilience because it helps to sustain you and keep you going. Emotions aren't binary. You're not either good or bad. The reality of a season like this is there is a lot going on that's difficult, but that doesn't mean we can't grow and expand the presence of positive at the same time. So pursue positive things. Don't feel guilty for doing it. Prioritise them. And finally, just before I go, a last word on hope because I've shared a lot of human psychology, but of course, Paul's letter talks about a bigger, better source of hope. You know, so much that's difficult in this season comes from our uncomfortable awareness of our limitation as human beings. It's the limits of our control. It's the limits of our capacity. It's the limits ultimately of our cleverness, our ability to solve this massively challenging situation. But when you get to the end of yourself, is that the end? Or is that a space where you can reach out to something bigger and better and beyond humanity? Psalm 39, 7 says, So, Lord, where do I put my hope? My only hope is in you. And, and that's what Paul means when he talks about a hope that will not disappoint. And maybe the thing that we need to cultivate more than anything in this season is our ability to hold a hope that's bigger and better and beyond our humanity, beyond ourselves. Because the reason we can tread water with a confidence that the tide will turn is that there is a bigger story playing out here. God's story being spoken over this world is one of hope that will not disappoint. So there will be better times ahead. This is not the end of your story. What we need to do is sustain ourselves until we see those better times start to grow. Father God, we turn to you in troubled times. And we recognise our need for wisdom, for grace, for your power and strength to get us through these days. Lord God, help us to make good choices, to keep our heads above water. Protect us from the suffocating feeling of despair. I just pray that everyone watching would know that there is hope in this moment. Sustaining hope, reliable hope, hope that will not disappoint. It doesn't come from politicians or plans or policies or any human cleverness, Lord. It comes from you. So I pray that in dark moments we might always be able to reach for your light to guide us and keep our hope alive. In the name of Jesus. Amen. <laughs>